let's talk about another interesting topic in mensuration called as cylinder okay and we all have seen some sort of cylinder in our lifetime on a day to day basis and we use it at home as well and i put some of the shapes of cylinder i think the most familiarized cylinder that you might be thinking is uh, this gas cylinder that we use at home or a coke uh, or a can of coke uh, maybe people who use toilet paper uh, they can think about it or if you buy a canned vegetables from a departmental store so these are some of the common cylinders that we see or shapes that we see 3d shapes which are in cylindrical nature and this also you would see on the streets if there are any construction work going on where we have steel or metal pipes that's going on so that these are different types of cylinders that uh, we can see and if you see the broader two types of cylinder are the solid ones which is nothing but um, if you see this cylinder it's closed from the top and it's closed from the bottom if you see this cylinder it's closed from the top and it's closed from the bottom so solid are like it has it is solid from all the side it has got a solid shape in terms of solid material from all the directions so there is no end that is opening those are solid okay so they are closed from both the sides the top and the bottom by uh, solid objects which are circular in nature that's what solid cylinder means and hollow means if you see this one there is a gap in between right there is a hollow cylinder in between uh, so that's a hollow cylinder there is a hollow cylinder here so basically what it means you can see through that you can see from the top and through the bottom or vice versa so everything remains the same but it's not closed from both the sides it's open from both the sides so this circles or circular solid material shapes that is available in the solid ones that is not available in the hollow ones so you can see through that that's the only difference on the hollow cylinder okay and now let's understand uh, from an exam standpoint of view why understanding cylinder is important like i said uh, the topic of mensuration has lot of 2d and 3d objects that we will be seeing and it's all formula based and you need to memorize the formula and memorizing a zillion formula is always not a good strategy because you might forget so as much as possible we should figure out a way so that we can quickly derive the formula on the fly or we should be able to just memorize few and based on that we should be deriving others so cylinder gives an excellent opportunity to do that and that's the reason i'm taking cylinder first as a concept most of the textbooks if you see they'll be taking other 3d shapes like cone and sphere and then talk about cylinder i don't know why they do that but if you talk about cylinder first and you understand cylinder which is very simple you will see in the next sub topics when we take in the future episodes there'll be strong correlation between the shape of a cylinder and other 3d shapes including cone sphere hemisphere and etc and by that virtue if you understand how the formula for a cylinder works in terms of either volume or surface area you can easily derive the formulas for this or you can intuitively decide what this formula could be so you don't have to memorize that so that's kind of the important thing why you should cover cylinder first and why it is important because it's a natural segue leading into other 3d shapes so i just want to make sure that i highlight that point okay moving on let's cover the two topics volume of a cylinder and uh, a surface area of a cylinder okay let's talk about the volume of a cylinder so here uh, in this example we are going to consider a solid cylinder which means it's closed from both the sides the top and the bottom and the way you can think about volume is let's say you have a cylinder here okay and uh, or let's say you take this cylinder the way the volume is defined is what is the capacity of the cylinder to hold anything for example if you are going to store water uh, what is the capacity of uh, or capacity of this cylinder uh, of cylinder to hold water that's it how much water it can save right to hold that's what it means or if you put any solid objects what is the volume of that and the way you can think about volume is uh, just the way i explained in cuboid and cube assume that there's a small sheet of a uh, cylinder and you're stacking up the same size and piling up one cylinder above each right at a certain height okay so when you do that it gives us a shape of a cylinder and if you can understand how much this will uh, store and if you multiply by the height because you're stacking that up that gives the kind of a volume so if you see here i know this i copied from the internet the font size are not visible but i'll read it out for you this is a single sheet of circle okay this is a single sheet like how we have here and this is written as stack of circular sheets okay so each circular many million circular sheets single sheets stacked one above the uh, other that gives kind of a feeling of a cylinder or forms the shape of a cylinder 
and if you see through it assume that it's not a stack if you see through it there is a vertical uh, axis and the horizontal axis which are bisecting or meeting at 90 degree and this piece if you see this piece this is the height of the cylinder because you're stacking up and this piece is the radius of the cylinder so at the bottom is circle so you'll have obviously have a radius a radius and since you are stacking up you will have a height okay so if you remember that concept it's easier to calculate the volume because we know volume is nothing but base of the object or area of the base of the object whatever that is so it should be area of base of the object which is circle in this case because the base is circle and multiplied by the height because you're stacking up so whatever is how, how much are you stack whatever is the net height you take that and we know that area of the base of this object which is circle is nothing but area of a circle which is pi r square and this is the radius okay and the height is whatever is the height based on the stacking up whatever you do that's the height so we get pi r square into h and that's the volume of this cylinder okay volume of a solid cylinder is pi r square h cubic units as always i've highlighted in yellow because we tend to forget this whatever is a given unit whether it's a centimeter or whether it's a meter you add that if nothing is given you just write units uh, and that would complete your volume so volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r square again area of the base into height so always remember this trick any volume right when you want to calculate uh, for the 2d objects or three sorry 3d objects volume is always for 3d objects cylinder or cuboid always take what is the base what is the base area of the base whatever, whatever is the shape of the base you can calculate that whether it's a square or a circle you will be able to easily calculate that and then just multiply it by the height because always visualize the notion of stacking up similar size objects as of the base one above the other and whatever is the height that will be the height so if you remember that even if you don't memorize this formula you'll be able to compute whether it's a cuboid or a cube or even a cylinder you'll be able to easily compute the volume because you'll remember this and based on this the other 3d shapes that i spoke about whether it's a cone or a spear if you remember this okay volume of a cylinder is this based on this there are easy ways to memorize and derive or compute or understand the formula for the other shapes so that's kind of an important side note now let's move on to the next topic so let's talk about the volume of the cylinder over here i think we covered the solid cylinder let's let's spend the same uh, let's let's use the same logic and spend a couple of minutes on a hollow cylinder so if you see this is the solid cylinder that we covered above okay this is a solid cylinder which closed from all the sides okay and what is a hollow cylinder hollow cylinder will be open from both the sides okay hollow cylinder will be open from both the sides like let's, let's take this example and in a way if you see this is a cylinder within a cylinder uh, there are two cylinders inside within a cylinder and that gives us the hollow effect because it's not you can see through that so you can see through that and hence it gives the effect of the hollow cylinder so by that virtue the there will be two radiuses because there are two circles formed so this this piece is one the smaller radius in r in small the inner radius and similarly this piece will be also a big bigger radius which is the outer radius okay so you will have those things and these are the examples of hollow cylinder in case they ask hollow cylinder these are some of the visuals that should come to your mind so how do you calculate the volume of the hollow cylinder okay so basically volume volume of the both the cylinders are going to be used by the same formula uh, pi, pi r square into h and if you notice regardless of you're talking about the inner cylinder or the outer cylinder the height is going to be the same from this point to this point the height remains the same so that is a common unit height is equal to same so we don't have to change that the only thing is the inner of the and the outer radius changes so volume of the each cylinder will be the same formula that you apply but you will just apply the respective formula for radius based on your calculating the volume of the inner or the outer cylinder and what remains is what about the volume of this portion the this portion this what is the volume of that and the volume of that or here if you see this gap over here okay this gap this also kind of gives us a shape of the cylinder and the volume of that hollow part is going to be difference of the outer cylinder with outer radius i have just underlined and highlighted minus the volume of inner cylinder with inner radius so taking the two volumes the external and the internal and taking a difference of that will give you the volume of this in 
this space that I'm highlighting, you know, uh, that's the volume of that space. And if you see the volume of the outer cylinder based on the above formula, we have, if you see here, we have taken pi r square h, okay? The only thing is that is going to change is the radius, okay? So we have pi and we have h as is. The radius is going to be outer radius, which is an r, uh, a capital R. If you see this outer radius, I put in capital R over here. And similarly, the volume of the inner cylinder is going to be small r. Everything remains the same. And if I take out the common parameters, which in this case is going to be pi and h, pi and h, then the volume of the hollow cylinder, which I have highlighted over here, that primarily becomes pi h within brackets, the difference of the square of the two radiuses. That is the external radius, the bigger radius, square of that, minus, take the smaller radius, square it up and take the difference for that. And that way you can uh, calculate the volume of the hollow cylinder again like I said you don't have to remember this formula just remember the concept how it comes and then it's, it's very easy to calculate okay moving on to the next topic uh, and again don't forget to add cubic units uh, for the volume any anytime there's a volume it's cubic units anytime it's a surface area it's a square units okay now let's talk about the surface area or the curved surface area because it's a cylinder we're talking about the overall area and this we are going to talk about a solid cylinder that means it's going to be closed from both the sides using a circular object okay so for doing that just imagine this way let's say you know at the bottom is circle and we also know the top is also a circle correct you know that and it's closed so what then and we can easily calculate the area of those two circles the only thing we need to know is what is the area of this and to calculate that Assume that you spread it out, you completely undo this cylinder. For example, let's say if you're going to imagine peeling of a label on a can of a food that is cylinder in shape. So if you completely strip it off and open it up, you'll get a shape of a rectangle actually. Okay, that's what you will get. Uh, this whole circular area, the whole thing, the whole circumference will convert into rectangle when you peel it off completely. Because if you open it up, if you cut this cylinder, and open it up it will become a rectangle so if you see here i have put it here so basically what it means is to calculate the surface area of the cylinder which is the total surface area we're talking about we can just calculate the area of this we can calculate the area of this and we can calculate the area of this and we can add it up to get the total surface area or curved surface area because the shape is curved okay so in that sense if you see here we have a solid cylinder which has a radius r and height as h and let's assume that you're cutting it open in between and kind of unfolding it to give this shape okay to give this shape or like, like i said peeling off the label from a can of a food so if you cut it out and let's say you're removing the cylinder or the, the the top and the bottom circles also in that case so you'll get this shape and if you unfold it the circles are easy because the area of the circle is going to be pi r square both the circles okay that's the easy part the only imagination that you need to do is this part where when you're peeling off a label from a can of a food like this, if you're opening it completely, something that was on the cylinder in a circular shape around the circumference, overall circumference, that kind of becomes the length, okay? And we already have the height over here. So the whole curved portion gets converted into a rectangle and the dimensions of rectangle are the length, the bigger side will be obviously circumference, whatever is the circumference of this particular thing, because that's what is going to be happening when you cut it out, when you open it up, that's what is going to happen over here also. So it will become the circumference. So we know that circumference is two pi r. And this part, which is the breadth of the rectangle is nothing but if you keep on opening this part, this is the height of the rectangle. And we already know that height is h. So that's how the circumference is two pi r and there is h because the area of rectangle is given by length into breadth the length is 2 pi r this is length into breadth okay and the uh, breadth is equal to height and then all you do is you take these three areas this one this one and this one and you add it up and that gives us the total surface area or curved surface area of a cylinder in terms of square units and that's what it's written here if you see here uh, surface area of the cylinder area of all the sides we have area of the rectangle that i talk, talk, uh, uh, spoke about then we have the area of the top circle and then we have the area of the bottom circle and the dimensions be for rectangle you should assume that it's a length into breadth which will, is going to be the circumference of that whole cylinder 
multiplied by h which will act as the breadth and then pi r square plus pi r square will be the same the area for the two circles and when you add that you get this equation and when you knock out the common you have 2 pi r from both the sides you would remove it common then the only thing that stands out is this h and one of the r's from here and this is what you get and hence the surface area of a cylinder is nothing but this piece over here square units since it's an area we're going to talk about square units so that's how you need to understand how to work out the different formula for cylinder most important is the surface area and the volume of the solid cylinder i don't think you'll get volume of a hollow cylinder even if you get it's a trick question so as long as you have the visuals in the mind how to calculate like i said base of the object into height is always volume and then when you for the surface area assume that you're going to remove everything untangle it unfold it cut it out however you want to say and then see what are the different shapes and then you add it up that's how you remember the uh, surface area so if as long as you remember that the other 3d objects calculating their dimensions and areas and volumes will be a piece of cake and you can uh, simply sail through so uh, that's that's a wrap up on this topic uh, and then we can move on to the next topic